Both the Lumberjacks and Colonels are playing full fall schedules as independents, passing on conference play in late winter and early spring. I'm Greg Staudelmeyer. We welcome our ESPN3 viewers to our simulcast. My partner here in the booth is Jim Tyree. Thanks, Greg. Let's hit the keys for each of these teams here today. I think putting pressure on a backup quarterback and not letting him gain a rhythm and a confidence early, that's a big key for the SFA Lumberjacks. If they can get to Dakota Allen, it'll pace the game for them. For EKU, the key is defensive as well in containment of the running game. If the Colonels D hold the SFA offense to under, I think, 100, 120 rushing yards, I think it'll go a long way to getting a win because that means a lot of third and longs, and that means getting the D off the field. The third member of our crew is Wes Chandler. Wes, we've just seen the outcome of the toss of the coin. What has happened? Uh, David, see where your official today. Artavius Hendricks, the captain for Stephen F. Austin and Dawson Fitzpatrick going to midfield for the coin toss. Eastern Kentucky did win the toss, and they will elect to defer to half number two. Stephen F. Austin will get the ball, and they will move left to right here, as we call it from you, for Roy Kidd Stadium up top. It is almost nice August weather <laughs> in early November in the Bluegrass State, just about 30 miles from where the Breeders' Cup was completed here at Keeneland Racecourse. And who's going to be the thoroughbred today in this football game? The third game this season of four that Eastern Kentucky will play against Southland Conference teams. Both of these teams headed for potential 10-game fall schedules. EKU still looking around for one more game. They have one at Central Arkansas next week, a return in a home and home. Then they play two weeks from today at Western Carolina. You look at SFA, and we mentioned this in our radio pregame, Jim, that they've played four, they will by the end of the season, four division two teams after playing their first three games against FBS teams. So they've taken the foot off the pedal a bit as far as the, the type of schedule they play. But, uh, man, they are really coming on here as this season goes along on a four-game winning streak. Greg, I, I think it's difficult any time, once you've let your foot off the gas pedal, even in the, in the course of one game, but you go as, as long as SFA has here without playing top-notch competition or at least somebody equal to them, their last game that I really saw that I looked at that gave them a test was Abilene Christian. You go that long without that competition, it's very easy to get rusty. So let's see how they start the game today. And if EKU can drive against a very physical defense. Couple of returners back for Stephen F. Austin, the dangerous wide receiver. Remy Simmons is one of them. Corbin White, a backup running back. Their third string running back, the other one. And the punter, who also could be the kickoff man and has taken over that job, Thomas Cook, transfer from Limestone University. Don't sleep on White. I've seen him return on tape, and he has got some speed. Can Cook get it to the end zone? The answer is an emphatic yes, hitting at the top of the O, the first of two O's, the scripted Colonels across the left side end zone. And on this mid-70s day, Sun Splash Field, at Hangar Field and Roy Kidd Stadium, named after the Hall of Fame coach with 315 wins, the retired Roy Kidd. Off we go to football for the first time ever between the Lumberjacks and the Colonels. Trey Self, the quarterback, 6'4", 190 senior out of North Richland, Texas. He lines up in the pistol often, and he will for play one with two receivers, long side right, one left, and a wing to the right. And Self, a three-step drop, the throw on first down, and he is hammered down on a delayed blitz. And the guy coming is Nick Cheeley, and that's significant because Cheeley getting a second start because EKU's top tackler on the season, medical scratch today in Matt Jackson. Self never saw it coming. He he was looking down the left sideline the way the offense was looking up the field. Cheeley waited just a split second, then took off from the edge. A loss of seven, second and 17, out of the pistol this time. Handoff fake, slant pass caught, just shy of what's needed for the first down. They got 15 of the 17 they need, and it was thrown to the tight end, Chad Oni, the 6'4 redshirt freshman. Tackle by Fitzpatrick, the free safety, and now third and manageable for the Jacks 
at their own 33. Back to the pistol they go. Need two. Run pass option here. Going to be a run, and Self knew what he had to do. Comes around the right side, dives over the white strop, stripe, and gets out to the 37. Elijah Taylor covered him up, and it'll be first and 10 for Stephen F. Austin. Cheely, who had had the sack on the first play, he let the tight end go, and the tight end just runs a little delayed slant, a long slant that got him in position to get the first down with that run. Self a 61% passer on the year. Handoff running back on first down, and nothing there stacked up for maybe a half yard is Jaquarion Turner. He goes by JT out of Garland, Texas. Caleb Lundy, the middle linebacker, made the stop for Easter Kentucky. No gain. Scoreless, the first down already on the board for Stephen F. Austin. If it's one thing the Colonel linebackers have done well, it's play the run game. They have shot the gap extremely well this season. Pistol formation, three wide receivers tied in left with the duo of receivers. A little bit more running room for three off the left tackle this time for Turner. And the tackle made by the Jack linebacker, outside linebacker Kabash Ricker, Richards from Lansing, Michigan, and it's third and seven. You see him on your TV screen there momentarily. So long and lanky, he runs extremely well and can back up and get the play from the backside. EKU almost jumped off sides. No contact. Gets back on. It was uh, Hairston who almost came across. Anderson comes in at a linebacking spot. Back after missing two games due to a death in his family. Another pressure on self. He scrambles but can't get away from the Colonels. They bring him down and it was Ryan Jackson with the tackle. Ryan Jackson the freshman from Mount Julia, Tennessee, his dad, Ron, played across the state football at Western Kentucky. Well, the Colonel defensive line couldn't get off the blocks early enough, but what they did do was push the line back. The pocket collapses, and Self has to find something to do. He has to improvise. That's the pressure I was talking about, the containment of the quarterback and the run game. Max Quick to punt the football. Wilcox, the returner. Looks like an EKU player jumped off sides, and it's a very short punt, but a big roll for Quick. Staying somehow inbounds. Look at that football. Tightrope like a ballerina, the sidelines. But Eastern Kentucky jumped early there, and that will make it still fourth down after the 43-yard punt. And if they accept the penalty, fourth down at about Four. Let's see if they take the 43-yarder and live with it here. I think it puts them in a good spot. SFA, that is. That was a great punt. Puts the Colonels back behind their own 20. They may let it stand. David, see where your referee today wearing the white hat. Penalties decline. First down. And so we get the story. On the 43-yard punt by Quick, which will stand at a Lufkin, Texas. That was a really nice punt. It got an extra five or six yards just dancing its way down the sideline. So here's your story on the EKU side of things of the offense today. Injured late in the first half of the win over Central Arkansas two weeks ago and off week last week, Parker McKinney, who has started 15 of 19 games in his three-year Colonel career. Dakota Allen came on after a rusty beginning brought the Colonels on two scoring drives again, including the game winner from 21 yards out with seven seconds to go, may have been six seconds. And now Allen gets the start. He has started six of his previous 20 games. Keon Dixon in the backfield heel, Greg. And it'll be Allen with an RPO back and this one blown up on a toss sweep to the right side and there is nothing there. And great defense by SFA, the tackle by Revan Randall, the linebacker. And so EKU's had two quarterback sacks, and now the Lumberjacks get a TFL to begin at EKU in second down and 16. Trying something different, the Colonel offense. It just blew up in their face. Big loss here. Great way to get off the blocks by the SFA defensive line. Bradson Owens at a double tight formation. Two receivers left, running back. Booth, right of Allen to throw on second and long down the near sidelines for Beerman. Well batted away. Great defense. 
barely turning his head, but enough. Miles Brooks with the pass deflection out of Pflugerville, Texas, Hendricks at high school. And you can see Allen a little bit underthrown on the pass. If he gets Beerman in stride there, maybe a chance. Got to throw that a little bit longer down the sideline. Allen came into this game in his career 52 of 100 for 505 yards, three touchdowns, three interceptions. Missed five games with a shoulder injury in two years ago. Looks like they may be changing the play at the line. One of three receivers left on this third and 16 comes further out. Allen pocket has to slide to the right and he throws it away. So three and out for EKU. Both teams will open the game with a punt here as Thomas Cook will trot onto the field scoreless at 10.48 of the first quarter. One of the things that I saw about SFA and their defense when I look back at previous games, especially going back to very early in the season, they have a very physical secondary. They do not give cushion on the outside corners. They will play you up tight. They will jam you at the line of scrimmage, and then they will go down stride for stride down the field with you. So they are a very good defensive secondary. EKU's Cook standing smack dab on the goal line on the far hash, kicking right to left with a very slight breeze behind him. They came after him hard and caught at the 45, stepped forward for a yard or two after a nice Cook punt. And at the 47-yard line, after the 40-yard punt, we'll take a timeout with them from Richmond, Kentucky. <laughs> Colonel Football from Learfield IMG College. Note real quick, the play, cop, play clock that Stephen F. Austin is currently driving to or looking at toward the bypass end is actually out right now. So they are a little bit at a disadvantage. Only one play clock working right now. And that is behind the referee. Of course, there'll be verbal signals given on the field. Self sends his slot in motion handoff on the jet sweep there is a blocker out there over the 50 and all the way down to the EKU 37 for a pickup of 16 Xavier Gibson and there is an injured blocker down the tight end Chad Oney he was the one that caught the long slant in the first offensive series for SFA and he is in some pain Greg he holding a holding his head and kind of writhing a bit before the trainer gets out there. So Chad Oney, the injured player out of Denton, Texas, Geyer High School, he had a game-winning 16-yard touchdown catch in overtime against Abilene Christian. That is the only game of the last four that was against an FCS team. They beat West Texas A&M 34-6, then Angelo State, a D2 team, by 19. Then that 35-32 win over Abilene Christian in a game that was wild because 39 of the 67 points were scored in the fourth quarter and the one overtime. And then last week, they scored on their first nine possessions, beating Western Colorado. They were out ahead in that game, 37-0 after out. one quarter. We'll take the break with them. Colonel Football from Learfield IMG College. longest run of the four he's had this year first den of territory opposition territory today as both teams traded punts to open 0-0 10 25 in quarter one and here come the lumberjacks wide receiver screen and there are not defensive numbers out there down the left side inside the 20 yard line goes gibson again so gibson so shifty and quick 5-9 sophomore for 64 yards. First time in the ground, this time off the arm of quarterback Trey Self. They caught the EKU defense in a linebacker shift. The linebacker had to take the third receiver who was the closest to the inside, and with that, he stayed back about eight yards from the line of scrimmage. That allowed them to get the wide receiver screen going and a lot of room for Gibson to run. Offensive coordinator Matt Storm has found good play so far against the EKU defense. Self to pass on first and 10 from the 21. Man open at the right pylon, but over his head as he had to release it quick, self-incomplete. And he's now 204 today through the air for 31 yards. Gibson, one catch. And on a one catch. Gibson was the intended receiver there, second and 10. Cheely lost him again. 
And Chile is going to have to make those deci uh, decisions on assignment a lot quicker. Turner in at running back. Trips to the right, one short side left. Hand off, Turner bottled up in the backfield, but he got away from two kernels and then a wall of maroon slap him down at the 19-yard line after he gained two. It'll be third at eight. Elijah Taylor with help from Eli Hairston. Taylor out of Cincinnati Moeller and through Notre Dame. Now this is a big play, key defensive play for the Colonel defense because this is what you practiced for all week. Third and long, this is third and eight. You wanted to make, make them miss a pass, then make a tackle on the run game, get them in third and long so you can get off the field. Neither team has been good in the red zone scoring touchdowns. 55% for Stephen F. Austin and up the middle on Mark Self. Jukes the Colonel gets the first down on the quarterback draw. May have been an RPO, Jim, but he read it right, and it was wide open avenue. Goal to go at the EKU seven-yard line where Sales made the tackle after a 12-yard run on third and eight by Trey, Trey Self. Watching this SFA team this week, I noticed that they got better and better each time with that RPO making the decision. Do you pull it out? Do you keep it? Do you let the back have it? That time, great decision by Self. He saw open field up the middle. Turner behind Self with the pistol. Keep herself around the left corner. He'll get to the end zone as he dry, dives over the goal line. Trey Self with a rushing touchdown, third of the year. Also had ground touchdowns against SMU and Abilene Christian. This one from seven yards out. And the Lumberjacks are on the board in Richmond at 820 of quarter number one. Another RPO play. He just pulled it out, made the right decision. Self is getting better and better at that this season. Chris Campos for the PAT missed the first of many as the flag comes down last week. And when he Killing missed the formation, five yard penalty. We'll do the try. When Campos missed the PAT, he took over for all conference first teamer Storm Ruiz from last year. And when he missed it, that snapped a 152 PATs made in a row streak for the Lumberjacks. Now it turns into a short field goal of 25 yards, but it's for an extra one point. Six nothing Lumberjacks after the self run from seven yards out. Kick is up, plenty of leg. That one flies into the screen and it's seven nothing Lumberjacks. Colonel football from Learfield IMG College. And draws first blood in Richmond here today. Military Appreciation Day at the, uh, the old kid. 8.20 to go here in the first, and they get a seven-yard touchdown run from Trey Self, the quarterback, in the RPO. They did it well. Gibson and Self, they really the bulk of the offense in that drive. Six plays, 53 yards, two minutes and 20 seconds. The Campos extra point. Greg makes it 7 nothing. Reister, Kentucky, game 1,045 in their 100th eighth season of football dating back to 1909. And they've got to come from behind against the Southland Conference foe. Kickoff will be taken two yards deep and out with hesitation and Davion Ross, as it turns out, made a very poor decision. So he hesitated and the SFA defense on special teams was tremendous and they lose 13 net on the decision. And Greg, it was an unusual kickoff. I, I'll give uh, the kicker a lot of credit here as that had hang time to it. Brown, he put that up so high and it hung up in the air long enough for his coverage unit to get down and make a quick tackle. That was extremely uh, all kicker. Give him the credit on that one. Would have been his 10th touchback if EKU would have fair caught, but they didn't. Now from the 12 down, 7 0, 8 13 of the. First quarter, Allen looks right, now looks left, now scrambles and gets about four yards out of the scramble just over the 15 to the 16. And the tackle made by Stephen F. Austin. I, I get, I go back a little bit to McKinney and the injury. Allen just does not look comfortable yet. He has to find that comfort spot. He has to find it quickly. There's no rhythm. He is... The pocket didn't break down as quickly as he thought it was, but he took off running. He got positive yards. LaRon Cox made the tackle, number 92, out of Everman, Texas. 
Slot in motion left to right. Handoff running back. They sit on Booth at a loss of one. So a sputtering EKU offense thanks to the defense so far today of their defensive coordinator, Scott Power. And the SFA defensive line right now is just flat whipping the EKU offensive line. They're getting a push, they're getting upfield, they're getting into the backfield, disrupting everything, run or pass. They are big up front and they are athletic, led by Ahmad Murray, the 6'3 redshirt sophomore. Stole him out of Huntsville, Texas. Played for the Huntsville Hornets. That's the hometown of rival Sam Houston State. Third down and seven for EKU from their own 15 in a passing down Allen. Finds a man in a gap beyond the yard to gain. Catch by Dixon, the UConn transfer of the 25. Allen on target. His first completion of three attempts at EKU moves the chains for the first time today. Lumberjacks show blitz up the middle and then very quickly brought it back and set down in a zone defense. And Dixon did a great job of recognizing there was a zone on and he just cut to the middle where there was a little cushion and waited for the football. Owens tight in left, Brad's tight in right, Booth running back. One wide receiver each way. Running game to Booth. Booth spins 360 on the first down play. From the 25 to the 27, where the aforementioned Ahmad Murray made the tackle. Yeah, Booth is finding it hard to go in there. He normally has a lane or two that he can <coughs> pardon me, choose from, but that defensive line is shooting the gap. The linebackers are picking the right spot. Right now, it is the defensive line of SFA owns this football game. During the six-minute mark, 7-0 first quarter. McGlure in, Booth out at running back. Trips left near side of the field as EKU moves right to left on a quarterback draw for Allen. He almost got to the second wave of Lumberjacks, but he was dropped by the big lineman in there. And it was Nichols, unless they've... Uh, we're going to double-check that because we had spotted Knighty making a tackle last time, but on our stat monitor, they had given it to LaRon Cox. They may have had a number change. We'll have to double-check it. No, it is Nichols this time, so it was Nichols. LaRon Nichols with the, ta Nichols with the tackle. Third down and three for Eastern Kentucky, 5.30 in the first quarter. Trips right. McGlure didn't get the first down. Good third down defense by the Lumberjacks. And it was Willie Roberts, a cornerback, coming up on run support. And Bevan Randall, the linebacker as well. Yeah, they, they brought in an extra defensive back, Greg. They went to a nickel on third and three, just in case EKU had the, any uh, thoughts about a quick slant to pick up that first down. So obviously you check out of it, you go to the run, and they shot the linebackers through the gaps on a blitz. Stephen F. Austin tried to get to the punter, a booming punt, an over-the-shoulder fair catch taken by Gibson at the 15-yard line. So Cook got a lot of leg into that one, 40 yards, no return. Both of his punts have gone for 40 yards. And the ball back to the Lumberjacks, their defense stern, self-running their offense, and they have a 7-0 lead, and the ball back at their own 15. In the early going, we saw Cheeley out there on defense. Don't see him coming out right now. They've got Lundy and Hairston out there, and Richards is going to come down, put a hand down on the turf. So four down linemen, you don't see that much for EKU. Wide receiver screen, and again, a nice block by Simmons, but other EKU defenders come in, and only a three-yard pickup. Lundy made the tackle, and it'll be second down and seven. Lundy got him to kind of get off balance. Taylor finishes him up, but they have run that now three times. They've run the wide receiver screen, and they always catch the defense having to put the linebacker on the inside slot guy. Two receivers right. Short side is the left. One is out there in the pistol goes self this time. The 6'4 quarterback out of North Richland, Texas. Great protection all kinds of time. Goes to a tight end who's back in the game in Ani after going out with a minor injury earlier this quarter. Closing for the tackle, Cheely, who has now come back on the field. And he got to the 21-yard line to pick up a three. And it's third down, where so far SFA has had good success today. Two for three, came into this game 
32% on third down conversion. Self is doing a good job of recognizing where the open receiver is very quickly. Third down, and they need four from their own 21, leading 7-0. Self, three-step drop, but a pass to the sidelines, wide open, dropped in the hands and out of the hands of three-year starter Remy Simmons. And Eastern Kentucky will force the second punt of the day by the Lumberjacks. Plays there for the Lumberjacks. Simmons thought he was closer to the sideline than what he actually was. He was trying to mark himself, make sure he got a foot in bounds, but he concentrated on that too much, didn't bring the football in. Max Quick, 43-yard punt last time, had one blocked against SMU for a safety. On fourth down and four from their own 21, Quick. Rolls right, two steps and boots it away. High hanger, not that deep. It hits and takes a backwards bounce from the 43 and is finally scooped down at the 48-yard line by one of the special teams players for SFA. Just a 31-yard punt by Quick that time. And it'll be KU football with by far their best field position of the day. 316 of the first period, trailing 7-0. Unfortunate bounce there for the punter for the Lumberjacks. That thing took a shot to the open part of the field, the opposite side where they didn't have a gunner. Nobody was going down that side of the field, and it just kept going to the sideline. And EKU gets a nice little five yards out of that unfortunate bounce for SFA. And they're going to mark it at the 49 rather than the 48. Jared Matthews at center. Watkins has moved out to right tackle with the season-ending ankle injury to Schroeder. And here is Allen getting slammed down as he tried to pass out into the flat, flat left. But nobody had marked Day Day Coleman. And he made it a bad day on that play for Dakota Allen at a quarterback sack. He's now had his first of the year, Day Day Coleman for minus 10. Yeah, the linebackers right now are, they're choosing the right blitz. They're in the right spot to stop the run game. The defensive line is getting a push. Stephen F. Austin's defense was prepared coming into this one. It has been good so far. Four down linemen in the 4-2-5 defense. Now three linebackers. Play action out on a slant to Beerman open. And the son of a pair of college volleyball players takes it down to the 47-yard line of the Lumberjacks. Still not enough for the first down. After that loss of 10, they're third down and six. The tackle made by Jeremiah Davis, the free safety. Nice slant pattern. Caught the SFA secondary in a zone, so they just bring Beerman to the middle of the field. Long slant. That's been there. Let's hope they go back to it. Third down and six. Football 47, first time across midfield. EKU down to SFA, 7-0. Allen hit from behind as he throws, and it is picked off on a deflection. Interception pulled in by Miles Hurd, the safety. His second, he had one against UTSA, and Allen got hammered from the backside. And it went off of Colonel's hands. Yeah, the receiver, it went right off his hands. And unfortunately for the Colonel, offense went straight up into the air. It allowed Hurd to get under it and scoop it in to get the interception. And he better shake the hand of B.J. Thompson, the defensive end on the right side out of England, Arkansas, as he had the quarterback pressure that led to the interception. And for the Lumberjacks, nothing new. They are 11 turnovers forced, one given up in the last two games and a quarter down. And back to work they go at their own 29-yard line with a 7-0 lead. Here's a handoff to a running back unmarked and up to midfield on a nice run there by their starting running back today, J.T. Turner. The third string running back coming into this season, but injuries to Josh McGowan and DeLeon Ward, and Turner goes for 21. And boy, there have been unmarked either receivers or running backs or the quarterback today for SFA against this EKU defense that is on life support early. And in motion, handoff fly sweep. It's Jones back in after missing games. And Larry Jones, the third, who's played only four 
of their previous seven games due to a hamstring injury back on the field. He's got their best speed from a slot, and he gets three there before Betts forces him out. Jason Betts, a freshman nickelback outside linebacker. Yeah, Colonels are trying to find anybody that can put a little pressure on Self, but Self is making the right decisions right now. They love to bring those receivers from the end and give them the handoff. Second time in four possessions. They've been across midfield, leading 7-0. And again, handoff running back straight up the middle, and it's Turner for another big chunk of yardage. This time he went before Dawson Fitzpatrick got him from the 47 down to the 30 for 17 more. So he's ripped off back-to-back -back runs for 38. And the Lumberjacks trying to add to a 7-0 lead going for the corner to Gibson. He beat the Colonel. He has the touchdown catch. What a beautiful haul against Jarius Brents, the U of L transfer by Gibson. And that is his seventh touchdown of the year, second in FCS football. And it is 13-0, Stephen F. Austin. 26 seconds, first period of play. That was a beautiful area. Ariel by Trey Self is 12th of the year. And, and even underthrown a little bit. Gibson just went up and took it away. That has been their game on the outside. They do a lot of 50-50 balls. Gibson comes up with more than his share. Not a great snap, but a good job by the holder. The punter Max Quick to get it down for Chris Campos. And it is 14-0. Stephen F. Austin here in Richmond, Kentucky today. You go back, Jim, and you look at Xavier Gibson, and he's, as we said, second in the country in FCS football. Now, granted, only 15 teams playing in the 126 in the division in the fall, but the only other receiver that's ahead of him in touchdown catches is Lawan Le Winningham. And by the way, Winningham, with 11 touchdown catches, is from Central Arkansas, a team that lost EKU here two weeks ago, which will host Eastern Kentucky next week down in Conway, Arkansas. Drive, Greg, for Stephen F. Austin to get their second touchdown on the board now. 30-yard touchdown pass from Trey Self to Xavier Gibson. Gibson's seventh touchdown catch of the year. Four plays, 71 yards, a minute 28. They got into a tempo. And we're seeing this SFA team on offense look like what the Colonels did a couple of weeks ago with Parker McKinney. He is in rhythm. He is doing what he needs to do and making the good decisions. Here comes the kickoff, and I think Davion Ross got the message at the EKU sidelines as that one was floating down at the three with the high kickoff, and Ross takes the fair catch after trying to bring one out two yards deep and getting hammered down at the 12. I think he got the message, fair catch, in Eastern Kentucky in a 14-0 hole in the first 14 minutes plus of this game with their backup quarterback, Dakota Allen, back out into the field for the maroon and white as the Lumberjacks will spread out a defense that's been very effective so far today. Allen has to find that rhythm that Self has on the other side. If he can find that rhythm, he can get start to get his team back into this game. Total yardage totals are disparity of huge proportions. Allen with a keeper and runs out of bounds, losing two yards. So he never could turn the corner with that quick lateral pursuit by the Lumberjack defense. Eastern Kentucky now on 13 plays, sitting at 18 yards. The Lumberjacks on 19 plays, 143 yards and 14 points on the board with 14 seconds to go in the first period of play. If you stretch the quarterback out to the sideline like that, the defensive secondary has a chance to collect themselves and get to the ball. Allen to throw on second and a little dangerous pass here to the near side at the end of the first quarter, but it got to Beerman. So he's covered up by Randall, caught it at the 29. So they picked up six, That's and that'll the be end the, the end quarter. of the first quarter with the Lumberjacks of SFA up 14-0. Colonel football from Learfield, IMG College. He's got two of four on third down conversions, EKU one of four, and facing another. EKU came in 34% in third down conversions, and they've converted only one today. They've had to punt twice. Allen had a tipped ball that was intercepted, and Stephen F. Austin, 
leading this one, hoping to get the ball back to a red-hot Trey Self, who has either run himself, found the right running back to give it to, or found the receiver, and that's why they lead by 14. Greg, before the game, I talked about Allen needing something to boost his confidence once he got into this football game. He has not had that play yet. There, it just hasn't existed. He's not been able to have that first down throw or give it off to a running back and get a first down. He's, he's just not had that play to get him in rhythm yet. Here comes the redshirt junior from Lebanon, Ohio, and a big third down with his team already down two touchdowns. From their own 29, and here comes the pressure. Allen throws, breaking off the pattern. Dixon, great play to make the catch. Near sidelines of the 40. Jersey grabbed to keep him contained, but he got the first down to the 44. It was Hendricks who covered him at Eastern Kentucky, moves the chain. That's a timing play, and that was called in the quarter break. You call that timing play, all right, Allen, you're gonna back up and you're just gonna heave this thing once you feel the pressure, and Dixon made his cut after the ball was in the air. Here is first down and 10 from the 44. ZKU converted third down and six from their own 29 for 15 yards. Allen sets it to pocket, breaks down, second sack of the day, and it was on a blitz, I mean, not a blitz, but just good rush. Pass rush by Caleb Fox, the freshman from the Woodlands, Texas. Two and a half sacks on the year. Well, prior to that play, Jim mentioned earlier about Dakota Allen finding his rhythm. And one of the best ways to find your rhythm is to get arguably one of the best playmakers involved in Keon Dixon. That only the second target for Dixon here early in the second quarter. Maybe look for the Colonels to get more involved to number 16. Well, he made only two catches last week after having, or two weeks ago, last game. And now you're second down at 18. You've had quarterback sacks of negative 10 and negative 8 today. Both teams have been their quarterback sacked twice. Here's Allen on a keeper. That doesn't do you much. Only a yard. Great defensive play by Brevin Randall, who's already had a tackle for a loss today. His dad, Anthony, an All-American of both Pittsburgh State and Northeastern Oklahoma A&M and EKU. And third in a bundle here. Third down and 18. They, they are winning the lottery right now on defense. They are guessing right on almost every play on the scrimmage. They, it, they've got a linebacker to shoot a gap, or they're beating someone on the offensive line to make tackles in the backfield. Two receivers right, one left. EKU operates third and a bunch from their own 37. Tight end Brads comes to the right side, so they overload the right. And here's Allen setting the pocket, throwing long for Beerman and incomplete. That one is along the white of the sidelines. And again, good coverage down the sidelines by Hendricks. That's another one of those that you kind of time a little bit. You try to let Beerman get the outside on the sideline and let him get down the sideline a bit before you release it. That one just a little bit overthrown. And I go back to that rhythm thing. Allen is just not comfortable. He's not comfortable and hasn't shown any sign that he'll get that way. He is four for eight today at EKU has to punt for the third time today. And this one was tipped at the line and partially blocked. And it's picked up by a SFA player after another backed away from it at midfield. And they moved it down to the 46 yard line. Chris McCune, the punt of 14 yards and it looked like it was deflected here. It was deflected by the guy rushing from the right side of the punter. Just able to stretch his hands out. He really didn't leap. He was just able to get his hands out and touch the football. Jeterius Evans thought it was just a short punt, so he backed away from it. He could have picked it up and scooped and went. 12-17 in quarter two here. 14-0 SFA. You could hear the coaches for SFA screaming, get it get it it's been blocked so Easter Kentucky three punts one of them blocked partially another interception and their fifth possession will be their best start for the Lumberjacks at the Easter Kentucky 45 already owning a 14 nothing lead Referee Please adjudicating something phone. here 12 minutes 40 seconds 12 minutes 40 seconds so they add 23 seconds to the second quarter game clock here at Richmond, Kentucky, where Eastern Kentucky over Thank the you. years is 228, 61 and 1. But if something doesn't turn around, it'll be their 
second loss in the stadium opened in 1969. Pistol for Self, who's been excellent today at quarterback. High snap to him, pulls it down, handoff running back. The snap caused the problem there for Keegan Holm, and it kind of delayed the handoff, and Eastern Kentucky blew it up. Elijah Taylor with his first tackle for a loss this year, the best defensive front player from the field end. He got low. He got underneath the offensive lineman that time. I believe the right guard was the one trying to block him into the backfield and was able to hang on to the running back. Second down and 13 for the 48. Here's the jet sweep fake. Keeper by the quarterback self. He almost found that room up the middle, but only got four out of it because Ryan Jackson, the end, converged for second tackle of the day. And it'll be third and nine for self and the Lumberjacks. Today, they're two of four on third down conversions and own a 14-0 lead. Jackson's actually been playing pretty well early on here. Out of Friendship Christian School in the Nashville area of Tennessee. 39 for self. Huge play for the EKU defense. Just 32% on the year, but good today at 50% on third down conversions. Balance formation. Eastern trying to get to self. He throws underneath on a crossing pattern out of the hands of Jones at EKU will force a punt. Pressure by Ryan Jackson again, Greg, able to get into the face of Self. Self actually threw that one off his back foot. He was moving backwards to get away from the rush, put a little bit too much mustard on it, went right through the hands of the receiver. He was a runner-up in the wrestling tournament in his junior year. Runner-up on his high school football team in their class. Their division in the Volunteer State in football his junior year. Fourth down and nine, and here comes punt number three for Stephen F. Austin, 11-27 of period at number two. They lead 14-0. This one high up the elevator shaft. Over the head of the returner, hits it to five, and a fortuitous bounce well placed by Max Quick as it bounces backwards. It's down at the seven at Eastern Kentucky. When we come back with a football down 14-0 to SFA. Colonel football from Learfield IMG College. Kentucky, the football back, trailing at 11-18 of the first half to Stephen F. Austin, 14-0. And will start deep in their own territory at their own seven. They've had only one good field position today and couldn't do anything with it. Booth. Booth dodges one defender, cuts left to right and gets to the 14, so seven on first down for Alonzo Booth, only his third carry of the day. LaRon Cox, the defensive tackle from Everman, Texas. That was a nice block to seal the edge that time. Booth couldn't get the legs going. He wanted to. They couldn't go fast enough to break free of that one tackle. From the 14 in their own territory, down by 14 on a sunny, warm day in Richmond, Kentucky. Allen swings a pass out to Jones. Jacquez Jones breaks a tackle and slams through two more Lumberjacks just over the 25 for a pickup of 11 or 12 before Jeremiah Walker makes the tackle, give him 12. That was a nice job by Jones to break the first tackle. He gets that first contact, able to go right through the defenders, almost like a basketball move. You split the defenders and keep going upfield. Jones with his first catch of the day, 30th of the year, eighth most at FCS football. Played three games last year for Tennessee. Clock nearing the 10-minute mark. Dixon goes through the backfield in motion. Allen throwing along for an open Beerman. Got to him late, but Beerman still made the catch inside the 40, down to the 37-yard line. Beerman, a nice adjustment to stay with it there. All the credit on that play goes to the block by Alonzo Booth. Booth give the time to Allen to sit in the pocket and pick Beerman out for 39 yards on that catch. But it all goes to the block by Booth after the play action. Booth goes over and blocks a blitzing linebacker. For Allen, his longest pass of the year. Again, he's the backup quarterback playing for the injured starter and star Parker McKinney. And it is Booth up the middle. And it looks like EKU's brought a little angry to this drive after being down 14-0 as Booth picked up a few yards on it, about six on the first down play. So Booth's ripped off two good first down runs. That changes what your 
offensive coordinator Andy Richmond has in his play calling. What it stops SFA from doing is send the linebacker blitz every play. Now you've had a couple running plays, soften that defense up just a little bit for the pass game. Four Lumberjacks down in the 4-2-5 defense. Allen has Booth to his left. They engage. Allen in a pocket throws it for Jones out of bounds. He had to release it early as that pocket was evaporating on him. And now EKU uses it down that comes up fruitless and it's third down and four as Stephen F. Austin stiffens here as we go down the stretch in this drive. It's again the rush. It's that defensive line, and they only rushed four that time. Only the four down linemen coming upfield, and they're able to collapse the pocket on both sides. Allen felt, felt the pressure and had to throw it away. Owens tied in right along with Brads. Brads lined up off Owens' right shoulder as a wing or an H-back. Send the wide receiver in motion. Allen with the keeper. He got out of the gate slow, and it'll be fourth down. I think you go for it down 14-0. Somebody's helmet comes off. Rayshad Nichols made the tackle. It's interesting. Two guys, and you've seen my spotting charts. They're pretty detailed. If you play, you're on my chart. I've called two guys I've had to add to the chart today for Stephen F. Office. Antavius Hendricks, a good defensive back, and also the one that just Nichols. made the tackle in Nichols. Yeah, and... You know, it brings up a fourth down here for the Colonels. They're going to have to. I think that this is four down territory. You just go for it and hope you can pick this up. Five of eight on the year. Five of 11 by SFA's opponents. Allen hadn't gotten his legs running today very well. Going to give it to the big fella booth, and he got the first down. Did he fumble the football, though? SFA saying, we've got the football. You could see their sideline celebrating. Booth got across the line to gain. No, I think it's going to stay with the Colonels. Well, I was reading the SFA reaction on the sidelines, and Eastern Kentucky gets a first down on fourth down. It's very difficult to wrestle the football away from Alonzo Booth. He's so strong, not just on the bottom portion of his body, but also up top as well. And if he lost the football at the end of that, he was able to stay in there and pick that up. The head coach of SFA, Colby Carthel, making his plea to the line judge that and that may go up and go to the replay booth. He got it just in time. The whistle sounds here. If we toss it to the replay booth, the decision comes to Daryl Crossway. And from the replay I saw, Greg, there is nothing they're going to be able to see from this replay that would overturn the call on the field. That's the important part. It was ruled that EKU recovered the football it came out. I don't know if they can say anything based on the scrum for the football that would overturn that call. There's a oh, It certainly came out of Booth's hands, and SFA reacted as though they had it. But if they've given it to Great Eastern Kentucky there. in the pile, once they get into the rugby scrum, I can't see anything, Jim. And the guy that shot in there and caused the fumble was Brevin Randall. We've called his name all day, but he shot in. I don't know if his hat got put on the football, but he was the one that caused all the commotion to begin with. But nothing on tape to overturn it, and away we go. EKU and Uso set it down. 7.55, first half, 14-0, Stephen up Austin. Out of the oldest town in Texas, Nacogdoches. Whistle sound as the play engaged. Ruling, ruling, ruling on the ruling field was field. a fumble. fumble. Previous play Previous is under play. video review. I thought the video review was over. We didn't get any indication, and then they throw it. Well, there was never a signal from upstairs, yeah. and Colby Carthel called timeout to give the guys upstairs more time to look at it. And once they had more time, I think they figured out, we need to take a longer look at this, so they stopped the play. Carthel with a very well-placed timeout here to give the replay official another look. Out of Angelo State, graduated in 2000, played middle linebacker, also threw the discus for the track and field team. Then really made his name for himself. Five years head coach at Texas A&M Commerce, where he is 59 and 18, and three Lone Star Conference titles in the 2017 Division II National Champion. And Greg, a character. He was so much fun this week on the press conference before the game. He really had fun with it. It was election day, and he went through and asked every 
every member of the press that was there on the Zoom call whether or not they had voted that day. And he was going to be mad if they hadn't, but luckily it was 100% turnout. You representing Kentucky, they probably gave you a provisional ballot on that Zoom call. <laughs> Seven minutes, 47 seconds left in period two, and it's 14-0 SFA. They've already forced a tipped ball interception picked up by Miles Hurd. Now, I didn't see anything on the video we looked at where you could see uh, West Chandler down. Yeah, I agree with you guys. There's just too many bodies in that After report. review, ruling on the field, stand. First down, Eastern Kentucky. Well, if they had had it turned over, it would have been 12 turnovers forced in two and a half games and only one given up. We should have just went to West Chandler because as soon as West <laughs> says anything, they make the decision. So Eastern Kentucky trying to get its offense going. Dakota Allen, 6 of 11, 93 yards, sacked twice, picked once. First and 10 after the booth, first down run where he fumbled the football. And that's a big first down for EKU. They were on the verge of turning it over again. Osaka Day, the big defensive tackle, lined up at nose here out of Ridgepoint High School in Houston. He's a good one. They've got a really nice defensive line. I was impressed on film with B.J. Thompson, his speed to the edge. Ahmad Murray inside. Dixon has come in the backfield here for the second time today. Keon Dixon, the wide receiver. Walt Wells had an extended conversation with the referee. It lasted a good minute and a half there. That's why we're late getting back to play. First year head coach at Eastern Kentucky. Came over from Kentucky where he was quality control under Mark Stoops after two years offensive line coach at Tennessee. Assisted here under two different coaches in the past. Allen to throw, got a man at the hash near side on first and 10 for eight. Wilcox, the Bowling Green transfer from Independence Community College as well. Covered up by Brevin Randall, the busy linebacker, after the first down throw of eight yards to the 20 yard line. Allen that time recognized that SFA was in a zone out in their secondary. It was almost like an umbrella in the secondary. And one linebacker in the middle of the field could not cover both of the flat area receivers for EKU. Clock reaches the seven minute mark of the first half. EKU driving down 14 nothing. Here's Allen throwing back to the near side. Caught as they flooded the zone with a running back on play action. And the receiver made the catch in Jones. So he handed, he did the fake handoff to Booth and came back away. I thought he was throwing to Booth, but it was to Jones. Jones was well covered by Jeremiah Walker, but they got the first down to the 12-yard line. Yeah, they just needed a few, and Jones makes the cut at the right time. That's a simple out pattern with Walker giving a little bit too much cushion over there. Timing throw makes the first down. Dixon and Jones in an eye formation of receivers right side. Near side of the field, Bierman bias lonesome and man coverage to the left. Booth hops left of Allen on the RPO. Allen keeps it to the 10. No, he didn't even get there. Allen got to the 11, and that's it for a pickup of one. And they have done a great job containing Dakota Allen today. And it was that defensive tackle we talked about, Osagade. The six-foot junior. Yeah, he was able to get off his block and extend out. You know, he's such a big guy, six foot two ninety. I think they're being a little bit light in that. He moves so well for a guy that size to get to the outside and extend that toward the sideline. This drive has lasted well over five minutes. Here's the eleventh play. Jones in motion, second and nine from the SFA eleven. Allen good protection. Floated back to Jones, way back at a twenty and he loses big yards. I thought it was going to be a throwback play, the way they played that play, Jim, and it was well covered by Miles Brooks, a cornerback. Jones didn't have anywhere to go. Weird play there. Yeah, I think that was probably an emergency check down as far as the receiver goes. Let's go down to Wes. What'd you see, Wes? And you had the option of, of throwing it. Ke uh, Keandre McClure was actually inside the five wide open but I, I guess just did not see him there. That will be one to look at in film study. Now you're third and 11, trying to get points down 14-0 at the five minute mark. Slot left and Wilcox comes to the backfield. Out of looking all the way, Jones, contact, no flags fly. A lot of hands, defense there, and good defense by T.K. Lloyd. 
the strong safety at EKU will have to settle for an attempted field goal from South Carolina transfer Alexander Wozniak. Again, failure in the red zone for Eastern Kentucky, now sub 50%, 10 of 21 in touchdowns in the red zone. That just doesn't cut the mustard. That's one of those classic situations where the end zone becomes a 12th defender for Stephen F. Austin. Here from the right hash mark, a 30-yard field goal by Wozniak is good. EKU on the board at 451, 14 3. Stephen F. Austin, after Wozniak bangs it home on a drive of 12 plays, make it 13 plays, 80 yards. Timeout on the field. This is Colonel Football from Learfield IMG College. Colonels. Colonels, but they end up getting only three points out of it. A 30 yard field goal by Alex Wozniak. Second quarter with 4.51 left to go. Long drive is what I said, and it was 13 plays, 80 yards, 6 minutes and 27 seconds. Again, Greg, they only get three out of it. And as far as Walt Wells is concerned, he said it before, that's not what they want to do in the red zone. Two returners waiting. Chance here for White at the five. Dangerous. White to the 20, cuts out right, finds a gap, and then on his back, tackled by Madison Norris, backup linebacker for Eastern Kentucky. Now 25 drives this year, and they have had scoring drives, and 14 of them have come over 70 yards, and nine of the 25 have had double-figure plays in it, but only their fourth over five minutes. Greg, six minutes and 27 seconds in that field goal drive by the Colonels. Your defense has had a long rest. They have to bow their back here if you're the Colonels. Playing without their top tackler and their star on defense, Matt Jackson today. Self play action, man, wide open, and Self missed him. Boy, he had Gibson wide open. Gibson turning back, wondering where the ball was going. Pressure may have forced Self to release quick, and he is now Five of nine on the day, one touchdown sack twice. That was a longer route for Gibson than what Self throwing the football thought. They faked the handoff in the backfield on the jet sweep. That may have been intended for Gibson in the end, but it was supposed to go longer downfield. I think Self just kind of threw that a little bit early, seeing him so wide open. Pistol formation as they work from their own 30 with a 14-3 lead. Here come the Lumberjacks, working right to left. Self, good protection. Now breaks down a bit, but coming back to get it at the 38 is Simmons and dragging four or five curdles with him for an extra five yards and a first down to the 44-yard line. Fitzpatrick finally made the stop after the 14-yard pickup. They're and they're in the hurry up or the tempo. Yeah, they're going to try to hurry things up, keep the Colonel's defense from subbing out, keep them off balance. And they don't do a hurry up offense like you've seen the season before. What they do is they will go to the line and then look for the play call. Yeah, brought a tight end in and a slot out. Running back up the middle, they have not been able to mark him at all. Another big chunk of yardage on the run across midfield down to the EKU 43. A pickup of 13 more for JT Turner. He's had 21, 17, and 13 yard runs today. Alante Lee Park to tackle. Uh, if you're deep corners in a cover two or having to make a tackle on the running back, he's gotten too far down the field. Got to try and get him at the point of attack if you're one of those linebackers in the middle of the field. Playing out their star running back, Daly on Ward today, but Turner turning into one of many offensive stars for the Jacks. Wide receiver screen to Gibson, trying to get around two Colonels, and he got away from Hayes. Faked him out of his shoes and got an extra six yards to the 33-yard line. Well, yes, FA right now doing everything right. Offensive line giving the quarterback time to throw. They've thrown that wide receiver screen. That's the fifth time I've seen it here in the first half, and they keep moving the sticks. The key for EKU was to get the defense off the field. They have not been able to do that in the first half. Time of possession adding up to a six-minute advantage for the Lumberjacks at a 14-3 lead. 3.15 in a moving second quarter clock on a sunny day in central Kentucky. Self sacked for the third time on the play action at EKU Converge led by Javari Anderson, the UCLA transfer. He had help. 
from Shane Burks the second, the nose tackle. That's about the third time, really, all half that I've seen EKU's defensive line get the push into the backfield. They did not allow Self to set up and have the time to go through his progressions. Pocket collapses immediately. They're able to get to him around the blocks. First sack of the year for the UCLA transfer. Missed the last two games due to the unexpected death of his mom out in Oakland, California. Second down at 15. Self play action. Great protection. Hold. Flag hold. And out of the hands of the tight end, it was the outlet valve a yard beyond the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to get Porterfield. He just completely tackled. Uh, I believe it may have been Floyd. Holding, holding. Offense. Offense, number 70. 70. 10-yard penalty from the brief spot. Still second down. Third player I've spotted, even though I had him on my chart there. Yeah. Porterfield was not in the two deeps. That's three players that were nowhere on the two deep that have played today. First on offense, Porterfield at left guard was the starter but got injured in the UTSA game first time back so they've got more healthy Jim except for the loss of De Leon Ward the running back and also one of their wide receivers Lawton Reichel not playing today now it's second and 25. I think it was Floyd that got the pressure and Porterfield just laid on him put took him to the turf. EKU with three sacks today but down 14 to 3 from the 48 of EKU, here comes Self and the Lumberjacks. Play action, rolling right, got forced from the pocket, running, he'll take off. Got around Anderson, got a good block on the edge, got some of the penalty yardage back. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line, a run of 13 by Trey Self. He made a little juke move at midfield to get around the right edge, and it just caught Cheely dead in his tracks. He froze, and that allowed the quarterback Self to get the edge and go down the sideline to, for the big game. On third downs today, SFA 2 of 8, EKU 2 of 8, or 2 of 5, 2 of 8 for EKU. Curdles bring Floyd out of the lineup, extra back in here. Third and 12 from the 35, Self out of the pistol. Pocket breaking down, they got it. Ball comes loose, picked up by a big lineman for EKU. Straight arming, a lumberjack at Eastern Kentucky's Elijah Taylor comes up with a first turnover of the day that has gone to the EKU side of things after the Jacks have picked off the EKU quarterback once at a Rolling big turnaround here. Fumble. Self got pressure Covered from the Kabosh defense. Richards Touchdown. on the blind side. Kabosh Richards on the blind side of Self. Self never saw him coming, caused the fumble, and Taylor picked it up and started running. But it all starts with the edge rush. Richards got around and took the blind side of Self as he went to run. They're going to go up and look at this, but from what we quickly saw on replay, it looked as though it was a clean fumble knocked out of the hands of Self. And that is only the fourth lost fumble if it stands of the year for the Lumberjacks. Timeout. We'll be back, 1.49 to go. Could EKU close down by 11? Curdle football from Learfield. I from the 44 of SFA after the turnover, ball tipped on an Allen throw intended for Jones off target. Second tip of the day, that one not intercepted, unlike the first. Miller got his hand on it. Yeah, he was just sitting in a zone right in the middle of the field. He was short linebacker zone. Ball went right over his head, and he was able to tip it. Wes, did you see it? Uh, yeah, I was just going to add something else, Jim. On the, we could look back at the end of the game and look at what a pivotal play that fumble recovery is by Elijah Taylor. You keep going in here, you score a touchdown, you're down four going into the half. You get the ball to start the second half. And his first of his career, first caused by Richards. Second down and 10, but Allen has been unsteady at times today. Pressure coming from a linebacker. Allen forced from the pocket, and he'll throw it down the sidelines and away. No knock on Dakota Allen, but he hasn't been the starter. He's lost his starting job a couple of times through his career, and he just doesn't make as cerebral of decisions as Parker McKinney does or as quick of decisions. And it's tough to take over a team that wasn't yours. And he did a great job two weeks ago in emergency duty to lead him to a comeback win. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing him start to become a little bit more comfortable, but still he's making not making his progressions across the field. It's third and 10. Will they squander a fumble recovery? Allen sacked. 
yes is the answer in a big way. So Jeremiah Davis, a free safety, coming on the blitz with a third quarterback sack of the day. EKU's most sacks allowed four against West timeout. Virginia. Stephen F. Austin. And now it's Stephen first. F. wants the football a 30 back timeout. with a minute 29 to go, up 14 to three. I got a quick trivia question for you guys. Stephen F. Austin alums is the category. And if I say Oilers, Saints, and Eagles, uh, Bum Phillips. That's one, but come on with the other one. Oilers, Steeler, no, Oilers, Saints, Eagles. We're not in a hotel. We're not in California. Go ahead, Wes. Let me break out Google right quick, and I'll, I'll be back <laughs> to you. I gave you a great hint. Jim knows. They, they used to call Jim Hot Wax when he was a DJ. We're not at Hotel California. Oh, it's uh, Don Henley. There you go, the drummer for the, the Eagles. Eagles. There you, you, you go. You didn't have me. I was thinking football, I said, Greg. That's had why me. it's a good trivia question. <laughs> One twenty-nine to go. First half. EKU three and out, and here is a wobbly punt going to take a big roll for EKU, and it's downed inside the 10 around the six-yard line with a minute 21 to go. So for Stephen F. Austin, they see EKU with two timeouts. They're backed up to their own seven or six-yard line after the 44-yard punt, downed by bowling the long snapper. <laughs> yeah. They're going to mark it at the seven rather than the six. Are you real careful here? Go to the locker room up 14-3 or to try to hit EKU long? What I think that Stephen F. Austin's going to do is stay with that RPO. I mean, they're getting huge chunks of yards every time. EKU four punts, an interception, and a field goal made. On the ground. Careful here, but good running room before a stack of curdles stop him after a three-yard gain as it has been a busy day and a good day for Jaquarion Turner, JT Turner, the running back. Yeah, Kabash Richards on the stop. He was able to get to the line of scrimmage, got stood up, and he bounced off of that to the outside, picked up a couple more yards. He has been open for most of his runs. That time he had to get yards after contact. EKU has three timeouts. No, has two timeouts, doesn't use it here. Obviously, if they make a good stop here, they would after this. With the ball at the 10-yard line for SFA, leading 14-3 late in the first half. Gibson in motion. Handoff running back. Spun around at the 13, and down he goes all the way back at the 7. Clock ticking down to 28, to 27, to 26. And EKU not calling a timeout. I'm a little surprised there. Quentin Floyd made the tackle. Yeah, he held him up and had an arm on him. Wouldn't let go. Finally got help from some reinforcements. But... Colonel's got to make some adjustments in the locker room. If you're Stephen F. Austin, I'm not sure you change anything. You surprised they didn't call a timeout there? I don't know. Easter Kentucky has been very good this year, both offensively and defensively, of making adjustments at halftime. And they'll have to do it again. That's the end. First half. They were down 17 at halftime to Houston Baptist of the Southland. Caught him, but lost at the end. They're down 11 to another Southland Conference team. Stephen F. Austin here, 14-3. You're listening to Colonel Football from Learfield IMG College. Thank you. Lieutenant.
Lieutenant General James E. Rainey is a career Army officer in command of the Combined Arms Center at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, and was commissioned in 1987 as an infantry officer from Eastern Kentucky University. Lieutenant General Rainey has served continuously for 33 years, including tours in Korea, Germany, Iraq, and Afghanistan. He has commanded at every echelon from company to division. He is married to wife Tracy for 32 years with two daughters. And at this time, I would like to present some opening remarks from Lieutenant General Jim Rainey. Well, thank you all very much. Could I first of all ask all the men and women that have served, all of our veterans, to please stand up. Please stand, everybody who served. Let's give them a big round of applause, please. Special shout out, Colonel retired Alvin Miller, two-time EKU football national champion, right up there, 79 and 82. Eight, I appreciate everybody hosting us today and recognizing veterans. One of the things I love about the great state of Kentucky, and especially EKU, is this is a place where people appreciate their freedom. People appreciate the men and women that serve. And I would ask you all to please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Those that have gone before us, put our country on its feet, kept us free, and especially those men and women that are serving right now in harm's way so that we can enjoy living in the greatest country on the face of the earth. God bless you all, thank you very much. Thank you, General Rainey. Welcome home to EKU. And now we recognize the following groups. ROTC alumni from 1961 through 1964. Current ROTC classes led by Cadet Battalion Commander and National Guard member Brittany Canary. Lieutenant Colonel Jeremiah Corbin, Professor of Military Science and ROTC cadre. Omega Delta Sigma National Co-Ed Veteran Fraternity and Alpha Chapter for Kentucky. And finally, let's not forget the families that serve too. We are honored to have Air Force Senior Master Sergeant Thornton Gallimore, wife Anna and son Max with us today in attendance. Thornton has served in the Air Force since 2001. Please join us in thanking the Gallimores for their service. The Eastern Kentucky University Army ROTC Marching Colonels and Guests would now like to honor all of our military veterans with our next musical selection. We ask that you please stand when your military branch of service is called. Here is the Armed Forces on Parade. And GI jobs. Today, Eastern has nearly 1,400 service members, veterans, and military dependents attending classes. One of only 16 Tillman Military Partnership Universities in the nation, and a proud supporter of the Wounded Warrior Project. Please stay after the game today for a special on field post game tribute to our veterans by the Marching Colonels. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's thank all of our veterans on the field and in the stands once again for all they have given on our behalf. Please join us in another round of applause.
to have a 100-yard rusher. They're 4-0 on the year. They're 0-3 when they do. Eastern Kentucky collectively as a team, in large part due to three quarterback sacks, and they've been all big, deep sacks, is negative three in rushing yards at halftime. Entered at 119 a ball game. Meanwhile, same average on the year for the Lumberjacks, but as a team, they've rushed for 99 yards, and thus they lead... 14-3. Neither team able to do much with the turnovers. EKU has thrown an interception. They've recovered a Trey Self fumble. And here we go to the second half. EKU will get the football to begin. I'm not sure if this means anything or not, Greg, but Isaiah Velez, redshirt freshman quarterback, who we thought may be third on the chart today, he was warming up on the sidelines with Matt Wilcox. So We'll see if that's an option for them or not. In my discussion with Walt Wells, he said Velez may be the backup quarterback if EKU has to throw the ball and try to play catch up. We'll see. It's one thing to watch. Here comes the kickoff by Brown. And Ross again, this time, same spot where he brought it out from two yards out and only got to the 12, will fair catch. At Eastern Kentucky. For the seventh time today, just a field goal to show for their offensive possessions back to work, trailing by 11. I think this is an extremely important drive for the Colonels. They have to show that they've got some fight in this game. So even if you take it down and get three out of it, I think they have to get something on the board out of this first drive just to kind of set the tone for the second half. Stephen F. Austin in its 94th year of football, Eastern Kentucky in its 108th, both playing fall football in this strange year. Wide receiver screen, missed tackle. That frees Wilcox to get something out of what should have been a negative play. Jim, you've got the goggles on it. Somebody missed a tackle in the open field, and Wilcox got seven on the first down play. Yeah. And it looks like Miles Brooks. Yeah. Brooks has, I think, going through his mind, he thought he was going to get there before the football did. So he had to make a move to not bump into the receiver and cause a pass interference call. And when he did, that allowed Wilcox to get free down to the sideline. A three-star recruit, sophomore from the state of Texas. Wide receiver screen, Jones. Only one blocker out there. Well played, but a miss. Tackle again. And over the 40 to the 41 on a pickup of nine. Tackle finally made by Artavius Hendricks. But there was a missed tackle out there, I think, by Floyd. And will come EKU opening the second half down 11 with a first down. Well, the wide receiver over there, Wilcox, was given a nice block to Takai Lloyd on the outside. Now, Lloyd was able to get one arm on Jones, but that allowed Jones to spin out of that and get a couple extra yards, pick up the first down. So let's see what EKU has done to make changes in the locker room with offensive coordinator Andy Richmond. Here's the end around to Dixon. He'll throw to a wide open receiver along the sidelines, far side at the 40, Wilcox. Razzle dazzle down to the 34 yard line and Eastern Kentucky picks up 26 on the play. Lloyd made the tackle 
as Dixon throws the complete pass. He was a high school quarterback, wide receiver, and defensive back at Glastonbury High School in Glastonbury, Connecticut. SFA has been really getting to the point of attack to the football very quickly. That time it hurt them. Everybody went for the fake to one side. That allowed Dixon to have a wide open field to throw the football. Second pass of the year by Dixon, incomplete against Troy. Allen takes off. Avoided a foot tackle and got a little bit out of the first down play from the 34 to the 32. Almost got him behind a line of scrimmage. They have marked Allen well. It was Jeremiah Miller with a tackle. You know, Allen, that's the one thing when he had to come off the bench and play the second half and a win over UCA in their last game two weeks ago. His running was something UCA wasn't prepared for, SFA is. Greg, I, I told you wrong, too. It wasn't Miller. It was Roberts, Willie Roberts, that got over and bumped Allen out of bounds. He recovered very quickly. Sophomore cornerback, Allen, breaks out of a tackle, comes left side, got to the 25. It all depends on the spot. Line judge giving him a sweet spot from the EKU side of things. TK Lloyd. Made the tackle, the freshman redshirt out of Allen, Texas. Boy, they got an awful kind spot there from what I saw. If you're EKU, you get up to the line, you snap the football. I don't think you let anybody take a second look at this. You got to get going here because I don't think Allen really set himself. He actually tried to make a second attempt to get upfield. First and 10 EKU, 24 of SFA, opening the first three minutes of the second half, down by 11. Handoff booth, and they blew that up, and that's that Osa guy guy. Osagade guy, again, he has been tremendous today, hasn't he? Can't stop him. I, I mean, he's the nose, and he's getting underneath. He's getting around, swim moves, strong arms. I mean, it, he's doing whatever he can to disrupt the point of the snap of the football. He's in the backfield before EKU's play even starts to take place. A loss of three by Booth. The running game was at negative three at halftime. It's at plus four now and Booth is a paltry 13 yards on six plays. Came in averaging 4.5 a carry. Play action on second and long for Allen. Dixon back to get it along the sidelines, but stripped away by Willie Roberts, the quarterback. Good job of staying with the defense and stripping it out of the hands of the sure-handed. Keon Dixon. Normally he'll catch that ball. He'll bring that in very quickly, not allow the corner to come across the backside and knock it out. So very nice job for the cornerback Roberts to get in, get the hand in, knock the football away. EKU just two of nine on third down conversions today. Their worst of the year, one of 11 at West Virginia. Allen steps up, says something to the center, Jared Matthews. Opening drive of the second half, EKU down 11. Allen sacked for the fourth time. Never got the ball out of his hands, but did they get his face mask? A flag flies. Miles Hurd with the sack. The referee, David Sewer, with the call. We'll see. Personal foul striking. Defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Did not give a number. You would assume it's on herd. And the head coach, Colby Carthel, in year two, talking to the headlinesman across the way. Yeah, he wants a number as well. He wants to know who that was called on. And he's not really getting an answer right now, anything that's at least satisfying it. Football moved, and boy, that was a free first down. That would have been the fourth sack of the day. So heard sack take it away. And it would have put EKU out of field goal range as well. They would have not have been able to kick for three. Offensive line has not been able to handle this rugged front four for SFA. But now they're at the 15. Down by 11, opening the second half. Allen has Booth to his left. Retreats to pass on first down. Takes off, unmarked. Got around one defender for a moment, but tackled nicely by Dayday -Day Coleman as Allen lunged his way to the 11 for a dangerous four yards there. Very quickly has to get out of the pocket. Only made one progression, Greg. He went to the right side into the end zone, receivers covered, and immediately makes the decision, I've got to get out of the pocket. He is not comfortable right now. And Coleman, a nice open field tackle. 
Second down at six, EKU. Failed to get a touchdown last time and only time in the red zone earlier. Here's Allen throwing on a slant to Beerman, stripped away another big time play by Artavius Hendricks. Get a player that hadn't played much this year but has been big time today in Artavius Hendricks. And that's a mustard throw. I'll give Allen credit for one thing. It was right where it needed to be. Beerman, the only one that could have pulled that in. It's just a good play by Hendricks to get his arm around and in the way of the football and knock it out at the last moment. Again, Bears repeating on the year EKU 10 of 21 in scoring touchdowns in the red zone. If they don't make it here on third down and six from the 11, they'll be forced to go for another field goal down by 11. Allen for Dixon, turns, stripped away. Another good defensive play by Willie Roberts. Well, that is three big time defensive plays by the Lumberjack secondary. Yeah, and Roberts on two of them. He made a nice, nice play on the pass that was going on the slant. So Roberts has stepped up. Your defensive line is owning the offensive line. Colonels have to settle for three right now. They've used that end zone as a 12th defender once again. 28-yard field goal for Wozniak. He's hit six in a row, including one today. This one twirling up and through the uprights. 10.04 to go in period number three. SFA 14, EKU 6, Colonel Football from Learfield IMG College. Media timeout. The locker room at halftime, the first drive, they go 12 plays, 64 yards, 456 in time, but it's a field goal. They have to settle for three once inside the 20 yard line, the red zone of SFA. 28 yarder from Alex Wozniak. 10.04 on the clock here in the third. They cut it to a one possession game. It's 14 to six. Lumberjacks lead. Now can the defense answer? Eastern Kentucky missed a try for two to try to tie a game earlier this year. Will they get that chance again today? Good kickoff by Cook. Putter and kickoff man. And it'll be a touchback into the 25. And Trey Self, who had a good first half, back out onto the field. It's interesting that Self was co FCS player of the week back in the Abilene Christian overtime win when he threw for 352 yards and three touchdowns. Same week that he shared the honor with EKU receiver Keon Dixon. But man, the defensive backs for. SFA, along with that defensive front, have been the stars today to hold EKU to those two field goals. Let's we'll see what adjustments the defense of EKU makes out of the locker room. Here's Self throwing the long one, trying to hit long a little bit over the intended receiver. And that one uncatchable down at the 30-yard line. Nearly a pass interference call there as they reached at the end, but that would well over. This is a team that can strike long on you. And Trey Self can hit the deep ball. He's had 19 different players make catches this year. Gibson that time, the intended receiver, Craig, and he had a step on Davion Ross. It was, if the pass is more accurate, it's, it's a big completion. He's had a 90-yard catch like Dixon of EKU has. Here's the running back who had a good first half in JT or Jaquarion Turner. Tip, uh, tripped up by Caleb Lundy, the middle linebacker. Now, after seeing their 11-point lead go to eight, all of a sudden, third down and about seven and a half yards or quickly, EKU's defense would put the offense back of the field here. Let's see what Self could do. He's been good today. This is normally where the EKU defense goes into a zone, but they look to throw pressure at him here right now. Moving from their own 27 and a half yard line, Self going left, got a wide open receiver who grabbed it with big cushion and along his home boundary got it to 37. Remy Simmons and the receiver Simmons and Gibson have worked loose of the EKU defenders here today in the secondary easily and often. 10 yards and a first down. Self handoff running back Turner changes directions, pounds through Colonels. Lundy and a teammate made the stop. It was Cheely again Cheely getting that start at the hybrid outside linebacker nickel position due to the loss to a medical scratch to Matt Jackson, the 
leading tackler on the EKU team, seventh in FCS football this year. And nothing against Nick Cheeley, but that's a play that Matt Jackson holds to about a one or two yard gain. He's just so much more, he's quicker to react and get that edge block off the block and get the tackle. Second down and four after the pickup of six on the run. High snap, self on the RPO, and nobody marks him. This is going to potentially go for the touchdown, but no, EKU closes, but not before the ball gets down to the 32-yard line. Lundy the tackle, and what a play there on the RPO. And again, it's Turner. He's working on a 100-yard day. That one went for 26, and Jim, he's ripped out up for an four player. plays over. 10 yards today on the ground. He's been tremendous. And it was one of the SFA players that uh, offensive lineman Guillory that was a little bit late in getting up and getting off the field, so they call a timeout. Longest of the day for him, and it equals his long of the season, 25 officially to the Colonel 32-yard line. Turner's had runs of 21, 17, 13, and 25. How about Turner today? He has been wide open on a couple of edge rushes, just off tackle plays, and then that on the pitch, great decision by Self to pitch that outside. There was nobody within 10 yards of Turner, and he's able to get upfield for a big game. 93 yards for Turner. He came in at 202 and three touchdowns. Rolling right, Self on first down, throws it out in the flat. Turner makes a man miss. Lundy wraps him down. Cheatley missed a tackle. And they get the ball for another first down on a pickup of 10. Just a little flat pass to well, Turner out of the backfield. Let me change that. They're going to mark it a yard short. Pick up nine, second and one. Sorry, Jim. That's fine. I mean, just flat pass, and you get nine yards out of it. And when you're getting nine, 11, 12 yards out of a flat pass, then you're making something work on the offense. Trey Self has got Turner lined up to his left. Under seven and a half minutes in the third. Up by eight and trying to add to it. It's Turner. And from behind, Lee Park caused a fumble. And EKU's come up with it. Fumble recovery for Eastern Kentucky. I believe it's Cheeley, but Lee Park, the old man of Ruling the defense. on the field was a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Eastern Kentucky. We rave about Turner, and then something happens. And it was Cheeley that recovered, Greg. But Lee Park makes the play by trailing. He's coming from the opposite side of the running back, going left tackle. And he's from behind, able to get a hand, one of those long arms, and get it and bat the football out of the arms of the, the running back. So a great play all started with Kabaj Richards. Self fumbled in the first half, now Turner. Eastern back to work, down by eight. Running back up the middle. Line of scrimmage was the 12. Booth carries it for four. Up to the 16, but a low day for Alonzo Booth. Just 17 yards on seven carries. Allen, who's been sacked three times, has carried 13 times. Well, and Booth, that's softening up a little bit for Booth on that edge just off the outside hip of your tackle. That's softening up. He's starting to get a three or four yard push on that. Shadows crossing the field here. They're in the sunny part of the field. So we get later in the afternoon at Roy Kidd Stadium at Richmond. 14-6, SFA, and Allen throws that one away. Beerman was in the territory, so no flag comes. But again, the offensive line has not been able to protect Allen. And again, Eastern Kentucky playing without their star quarterback, Parker McKinney today, the redshirt sophomore who really had this offense humming. Every coach and player on that sideline for SFA, they got right to the official saying, hey, that is, there's nobody out there. None of them saw Beerman. He was standing right there less than three yards away from where the football fell. Allen would have been sacked earlier in this half for the fourth of the day, but a striking penalty overturned that sack. Allen on third down, bad pass, well behind a slanting Beerman who just flails his hands out as this this football team is not on the same page with their backup quarterback and it's obvious to those watching listening or here in attendance under COVID attendance restrictions. And now this will be the second forced fumble that EKU has recovered that they have got nothing off of. No points, 
nothing. They're going to have to punt the football away, and good field position should result from this punt for SFA. EKU 0 for 2 on touchdowns in the red zone today. Had to settle for field goals. No points off those two turnovers. Came in plus 6 in points off. And here's the fumble. Muff, but picked back up. Almost an EKU player got in the vision, but apparently did not interfere. Media timeout. 39-yard punt. SFA back to work, dodging a bullet, up by 8. Colonel football from Learfield IMG College. As they go back to work left to right at their own 45, after EKU could not get a first down after coming up with a big fumble as the Lumberjacks were driving for a two touchdown lead. I think we're gonna see a lot of Turner in the next few moments. He fumbled last time, Lee Park caused it. Cheatley came up with it, right back, play action, slant, dropped. Started to run before he had it. Gibson right in his hands. Gibson today has made four catches. For EKU, Beerman, Wilcox, and Jones all three. And again, Dixon for the second game in a row. They haven't gone to him much. Kamari Carey, the guy on the coverage that time, Greg. And, you know, I had seen him as a guy that had progressed this season, that really had become a part of the defense, playing better and better each and every game. We have not mentioned his – that's the first time we've mentioned his name in this game. Uh, Western Michigan transfer. Self today is 9 of 15. Here's the jet sweep handoff and Gibson following blockers to make it third and short as he got just beyond midfield, picked up six, forced out by Davion Ross. The cornerback converted from wide receiver where he played under former head coach Mark Elder last year. Something that I have not mentioned in this game, and I need to, it's it's a mistake on my part, the blocking skills of the wide receivers of, of SFA, they have really been able to hold those blocks on the outside and give those guys coming out of the backfield a lot of running room. Three of seven on third down conversions. Three and four here, mix up. Turner stuffed. I don't know if they'll re rule that as a sack. May, Madison Norris. The Indiana transfer out of Hamilton Southeastern in the Indianapolis area. Recruited by Tennessee, Purdue, and Missouri. Played at Indiana. How about Indiana today? Put another nail in the future of Michigan football. Taylor helped out Norris, but what they wanted to do, Greg, they wanted to run that pitch play to the outside. Norris came on a blitz from the outside, shut down the pitch lane, and the quarterback had nothing to do but go down with the football. Max quick to punt. He's been effective today. That was a roll to rush, so not a quarterback sack, just a tackle for a loss. Three steps into it for the right-footed Max Quick. Fair catch from Wilcox, and back to work at the 15-yard line in their own territory after a 36-yard punt comes Eastern Kentucky with 4.52 to out. go. This is Colonel Football from Learfield IMG College. To third period. EKU a field goal from 28 yards. SFA a loss fumble. 14-6. Lumberjacks, they go back to work on defense. Entire field now in shade. Late in the afternoon in Richmond, Allen sacked again. A grocery store full of sacks of Allen today. LaRon Cox got him that time. As this offensive line has been whipped by the four-man defensive front of the Lumberjacks today. They've been Sterling in a loss of six. Greg, they've even stopped running that linebacker blitz up the middle. They're running the linebackers from the edge to help shut down the pocket very quickly. Cox up the middle that time just beat his man, able to get the sack. And again, EKU starts at second and extremely long from behind the sticks. Equals the highest number of sacks this year. West Virginia sacked. EKU's quarterbacks four times. Louisville had five against Eastern last year. Wide receiver screen to Dixon, but he's in jail thanks to tremendous defense by the Lumberjacks. And he got about a yard out of it. And it'll be third and long. Lloyd, the hybrid, strong safety, nickelback player out of Allen, Texas, second leading tackler. And you're in third and about 16 here. I'm just, it's flat out. The SFA wide receivers block better on the outside than the Colonels wide receivers have today. I mean, that's that's just putting it very simply. And in the trenches, either side, Stephen F. Austin has been the better team. It's shocking they're only up eight here. Third down, let's make it 15. They've got to get to 26. 
Booth comes out of the backfield. Allen's got away from a sack at a goal line, rolls right and throws it away. He threw it all the way to the back of the bench. Flag comes down. You would think it may be a hold on EKU there, but I should ever guess a piddle the umpire set the flag down. Allen almost got They're tr sacked uh, near the goal line. Oh, David Seward. Yeah. Number 74. 74. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So a hold on Peyton Collins and another three and out for Eastern Kentucky. The SFA coaching staff, Greg, were trying to make the argument that there was a safety with a hold in the end zone. They ran out pointing to the end zone, saying that Allen was a foot into the end zone when the hold took place, which would by yeah. rule be a safety. But the uh, officials, they weren't buying any of what SFA was selling. Colby Carthel in his second year has his team ready. Kudos to offensive coordinator Matt Storm and defensive coordinator Scott Bauer. They have hit EKU hard today. Great game plan, great execution. And they're going to get great field position after Cook punts for the sixth time today. Remember, Gibson dropped the last one. They come after him, and they got the second partial block of the game. Picked up in midair and returned to the 15 to the 10. They're going to take it in for a touchdown. Stephen F. Austin with another one. And the guy that got it was Nwach Chuku. Zach Nwach Chuku with the block and the score. And you just saw them coming after the punter over and over. They know EKU's snap quickness is not great. And they got it again. And we'll see who they credit it to. 11-yard punt, Nwak Chuku. Nwak Chuku. I had it written down. Easy for you to say. He is a redshirt freshman from Plano, Texas. And it's 20-6 at 307. A period number three make it 21-7 as they bang it home on the Campos PAT kick. At Eastern Kentucky on life support on their home field against Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin, like Eastern Kentucky, has a tremendous pedigree in FCS football, seven times to the playoffs. Their last in 2014, runner-up in 1989, a three-point loss to Georgia Southern, but that championship loss in 1989, eventually vacated by the NCAA due to NCAA rules infractions. Another interesting story, in 1995, they lost to Montana, the eventual national champions. Again, that was added up, Jim, I'm getting old, 25 years ago. And they lost in the semifinals to Montana, 70 to 14. Other half of the story after this kickoff. And Davion Ross, a fair catch. When your offense is sputtering, Ross had a 100-yard kickoff return called back by a block at the back against West Virginia. Maybe you want to take a crack there that they don't, and it's 21-6. After the three-play drive by EKU went negative five, and the second block punt partially blocked of the day. Yeah, Josh Thompson credited with getting his hand on the block punt, and then Wahuchku was able to get into the end zone after the 22-yard run. Double check, make sure that's the right player. There's been some, uh, you know, a couple Thompsons on the roster and some number changes. 307 in the third. Allen, wide receiver, pass to Beerman. Made, tried to make his man miss, but they lasso him down. Same player that has played exceedingly important moments in this game. Miles Hurd stopped Beerman after a nine-yard game. He had the interception of Allen on a tip. So they've had two tipped punts that have been partially blocked at a tipped pass that's been intercepted. And it's the outside rush that's getting to the punts. I mean, they're coming with outside guys to get at the punter who, you know, he's doing all he can, but got to have better blocking. Allen 12 of 26 today. Booth. Booth stacked up on a second and one, and they got nothing. Third and one coming. Booth has been bottled up. Eight carries for 17 yards. Osagade, who's been the stud up front, along with Laron Cox and Amon, 
Ahmad Murphy and B.J. Thompson with the tackle. Chance Hill got in on that as well, too. Let's go to Wes. And right now, Eastern Kentucky needs something to get this crowd back into it after that punt block return for a touchdown. This, uh, this stadium went absolutely silent. Lights on now, sun setting in the Bluegrass State. Underneath two minutes in the third, 21-6, Stephen F. Austin. Lumberjacks have played well today. And off Booth, and again, stopped this time. Caleb Cox for a tackle for a loss. Yeah, LaRon Cox, point of attack as well. These guys, they're just winning the battle up front. There is no inside blocking, and that's a big reason why Booth has a very low rushing total. New punter here as the rugby punter, last year's starter, Philip Richards in. Once Richards lost his job or main job to Cook, it ended a long streak of 11 years in a row as an Australian punter. The first here was Jordan Berry, now the punter with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here's Richard, straight on punt this time, not a rugby, not long, high, taken on the run by Gibson, makes two colonels miss, and they foot tackle him over the 45-yard line. I'm not sure there's an aspect of this game today that SFA has not been better than EKU in. I mean, they, they have beat them in special teams, passing, rushing, defense. It doesn't matter. I mean, they've just been better. So the block punt TD, a special teams return for the score. And now, after EKU goes three and out yet again, they're two of 13 on third down conversions. They've had a paltry rushing game of one yard and five sacks, highest since Louisville last year. Wide receiver screen to Gibson, makes a Colonel Miss Leapart, got around him, and they get him down inside Colonel territory at the 44. On a pickup of 10, Caleb Lundy made the tackle, but you can they can smell the kill now, can the Lumberjacks, in the last minute of the third. Foot on the throat, I mean, do you just press down now? And, and you know, it's all, those outside passes are so simple, it's the blocking. Those other receivers are blocking for Gibson or whoever catches the football and allowing them to get extra yards upfield. First and 10, good surge by the offensive wow. line, broken tackle right side, 30, 20, Turner just out short of the goal line at about the five yard line. He's over 1,000 yards rushing or 100 yards rushing today, Turner, Forced out after the 39-yard run, the longest of the day by Fitzpatrick. And that will be the last play of the third quarter. All the momentum on the Lumberjack side. They're That's 15 the minutes away from a happy charter flight home to Nacogdoches, Texas. Hurdle football from Learfield. Self, who's had a good game, 10 of 16, got a wing left in motion. Now four receivers that way. Self will keep it, got away from one man who had a hand on him, and he got in the end zone and a flag flies. Now was there a hold or something else? David Seaworth, the referee. Offense number 74, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Taron Robinson, who trades right tackle time with Drew Beamer, got the hold. So in penalties now, Eastern Kentucky has been hit no times because the one that they had it thrown against them a hold was declined, and that's the fourth penalty. And it will move it to the 40-yard total on those four penalties against SFA. It'll be goal to go at the 15 now. Robinson didn't need to hold. I, I mean, he, he could have just let go of the block, and I think Self would have outrun the defender. Sunset just beginning in Richmond. Here's self play action. Throw it out in the flat on the jet sweep fake. And they got it out to the running back who has a 100 yard day and JT Turner 
is taken down for no gain at the 15 by Kamari Carey. The Western Michigan transfer at free safety. It's second down a goal. And for EKU, where you've been all game, Carey, great open field tackle, was able to come up. No gain on the play. That's the first time I think that they've not got a positive gain on that swing pass to the outside. Colonels have Ryan Jackson and Quentin Floyd at tackle. Four-man front, second and goal for the 15. In motion, Simmons, and the ball fumbled by Self smartly as he bobbled it, goes down and smothers it to avoid the third turnover of the day at the 22-yard line. Josh Hayes covered him up, but it'll be third and goal all the way back to the 22. Listen. Bobbled snap yeah. and a hold, and all of a sudden the knockout punch not quite as hefty right now. And it's the first time I think we've seen all game that SFA's kind of broken down a little bit for a couple plays in a row. They uh, have the hole that starts this whole debacle, then the tackle in the open field by Carey, and then the bobbled snap. They overload three receivers right. Curdles are in man coverage, and they run the running back, and nobody marks him. And Turner got down to the seven-yard line on the third and goal for the 22. That will set up a chip shot for Chris Campos, who did have a field goal blocked by Abilene Christian, return for a touchdown. Campos taking over for the number three all-time field goal kicker in SFA history, Storm Ruiz, an all-conference kicker, who went 57 of 73 in his marvelous career. This will be a 24-yarder from the far hash for an 18-point lead and a three possession game. So it's a big one here for Campos. Set down, kick up. Insurance bought by Campos and the Lumberjacks. 12.45 well, to go in the game. 24, six, Stephen F. Austin. Colonel football from Learfield IMG College. That's three more points to the scoreboard. Makes it a three possession game. 24-6 with 12.45 to go here in the fourth. Six plays, 47 yards, three minutes and nine seconds off the clock when they got the ball after an EKU punt near midfield. And another nice kickoff by Dylan Brown forcing the fourth touchback of the day. Brown has had 13 touchback kickoffs this year. Should have been 15 if EKU hadn't tried to bring it out and get to only the 12. And an 18-point lead for the Lumberjacks in Richmond at a first-ever meeting. EKU against the Southland Conference, 4-2. and two. Of course, lost here by three to HBU five weeks ago. Two weeks ago, beat UCA here, who they play next week. And then from 1947 through 1972, played four games against Southeast Louisiana, won three of the four. They keep Allen at quarterback. Again, Parker McKinney not playing today with the shoulder injury suffered last game. Booth, and Booth's got good running room up the middle. Sidesteps one over the 40, breaks another tackle, 45, out to the 47-yard line. A pickup of 22 by Booth before Evans made the tackle from his free safety position. Booth had had nine carries for 16 yards, and the team had been at one yard today because of those five sacks and Booth being neutralized. By far the best rushing attack of the day from Booth. Down 18 and just over 12 to make it up. Allen throwing long, got Jones, but overthrew him. Allen has been less than sharp today. 12 of 25, puts his hands up on his helmet. Has not done anything to elevate his status. And, and that's a perfect route run by Jones. He finds the cushion in between the second layer of the defense and the deep guy, the third layer. And he runs a slant across the field going right to left. There's a 10-yard cushion between the linebacker and the safety. He's got to throw that into his hands, but overthrew that by five yards. Second down and 10 from their own 47 in their 10th possession of the day. Rolling to the left side on second down, just shy of midfield, pick up a three. Marcus Mosley, Jr., the tackle. They're playing some guys that hadn't played of late. Mosley, one of them. Mosley out of Duncanville, Texas, a junior defensive end. 
Reminds me a lot of Kabash Richards. Long, lanky, long legs, long arms. Can really cover ground very well. A little bit on the light side, but he makes up for it in technique. EKU 2 of 13 on third down conversions today. Their second worst conversion rate of the year. And they're third and seven here at midfield. Allen takes off, but he's stumbling, bumbling, and just got to the 48. And you would think here, if you want to play for a potential comeback as Ahmad Murray makes the tackle. You gotta go for it. Fourth down at five here. If you punt it, you're just playing keep it good on the scoreboard in the newspaper if we still have those things <laughs> these days. <laughs> Allen just is gun shot right now. The pocket is collapsing so quick. He's got time to make one read, gets a little foot happy, starts to run upfield, only gets a couple of yards. His seven start replacing the injured McKinney. He's a redshirt junior from Ohio. Fourth and five to Wilcox to the 45. He's got the first down 40 and got it down to the 32 yard line. Wilcox for 16 and on life support, but still a chance here as Allen was on spot there. Nice little job of setting up right in the flat. You get the right flat. And because SFA on fourth and six knew EKU was going to throw, they covered everything deep. They went into a deep zone, and the underneath, Wilcox finds that little flat cushion and then makes the first down after he catches the football. Here's that pro set again where you keep Dixon, a wide receiver, in at left half, Booth at right half. Now they flare out Dixon the other way, and McKinney throws it, or not McKinney, but Allen threw it to the wrong team. It was dropped for an obvious interception right of the bread basket of Day Day Coleman. I mean, he, he just threw it to the white jersey there. That's why you're playing defense. I mean, Day Day Coleman, if he could catch, he'd be a wide receiver. But he threw it right into his hands, and I think Coleman was just so surprised the football was on him so quickly that he couldn't put his hands around it. Ten minutes, two seconds to go, 24-6. Stephen F. Austin, EKU driving at the 32 after they convert on a fourth down just beyond midfield. Allen goes far left and throws it way over the head of Bierman, who then gets a shot taken to him by the defender, and the flag came down. Kind of almost, I don't know if it's targeting, but he took a hit at a defenseless receiver there in Bierman. And we'll get the call from the referee. And that is one that keeps no. things alive. Are they going to say no flag? That's a towel down on okay. the turf. Yeah. Oh, wait look. a minute. You're right. You saw a flag. The TV yeah. is saying the same thing. Now they're saying nothing. I thought I saw the flag, but apparently not. It was an uncatchable ball. McKinney, or not McKinney, but Allen way off target. Flair a pass out to Booth. He's got to get a block out on the edge. He gets one just shy of the first down as he's ridden out at about the 25. And it'll be fourth down and three as EKU is... Two for two on fourth down conversions today, down 24 to six. Clock winds under 9.50 here, and they've got to convert again, Jim, on fourth down to keep any hope of a comeback alive. And I can tell you this, I don't think SFA is going to go into that deep zone that they were in a moment ago. They're going to bring the secondary up a little bit. It'll be tough for EKU to throw that short pass and get the first down. And a timeout called by Colby Carthel in year number two at SFA. 9.30 in the game, and we'll take it with them. This is Colonel Football from Learfield IMG College. 9.30 in the game, 24-6. David F. Austin, Eastern Kentucky, has a fourth down and three. They've got to get it to the 22. You don't convert this, game's over. And Stephen F. Austin looks like they're going to come after Allen. They took the timeout, 10 men on the field. Here they come. Well protected. Allen takes off. Can he get there? He does to the 20. So he's chased down from behind by Willie Roberts, the quarterback. At EKU, three for three on fourth downs today as their life support comeback comes back. They marked him back at the 21. He needed the 22. I'm not sure that's how they drew it up in the timeout, but it works. He's able to get around the edge, and finally Roberts gets him from behind. But Allen, you know, his running game was one of the things we talked about. He's more of a savvy runner than McKinney was coming into this game, but he has just been run down by that quick defense of SFA. Under nine minutes to go. 
24-6, SFA, Allen throws it away and almost still intercepted. Up and a fingernail on it by Miles Hurd, who has an interception. The guy that got pressure on Allen that time, again, the nose tackle, Osagade, and Osagade, Greg, is still down. He grabbed Time his out, knee player. as soon as he made the tackle on Allen. You know, you could go to a lot of guys here today to be player of the game for Stephen F. Austin. Media timeout. Osagade is one of them. We'll continue our discussion when we return. 24-6, Lumberjacks. Curdles trying to find a comeback. It's Curdle football from Learfield, Iowa. Second and 10 for the 21 of Stephen F. Austin down, 24-6, 8.48 to go. They've converted two fourth downs to keep a life support drive alive. Allen trying to avoid the six sack. He fails to do so. Offensive line whipped again. At that time, it was Marcus Mosley Jr. What about Osaka Day? He limped off after that last play after being attended to by the physio. Uh, trainer A.J. Van Balkenberg and uh, Osaka Day out, was able to walk out under his own power. So good news for Stephen F. Austin. He's played a well of a game so far. Star of this game on the defensive side of the ball has been the defensive line of Stephen F. Austin on the other side. Self the quarterback and a running back Turner getting his first start. Third down and 19. Allen setting in a pocket. Late decides to run. That won't do you much good. He'll get down to about the 24-yard line, but he delayed looking for a receiver, knowing he needed a full 19. And EKU will go for the field goal here on fourth and 13 and try to get it down to a 15-point game on a day where the only time they've been able to score has been on field goals. They've been 0 for 2 in the red zone. They didn't get to the red zone this time. They were a yard away. This will be a long one, a 40-yarder for Wozniak, who's hit seven in a row, but 37 is longest. So this would be a career long. Plenty of leg, but it's no good. And another nail in the coffin as Wozniak misses, and SFA knows they're about to win their fifth in a row. Seven minutes and 25 seconds in clock time from now. And the people wearing maroon, many of them are heading for the exits now. Just a better football team today have the uh, have been the Lumberjacks. They, in every phase, their defensive secondary, their linebacker, of course their defensive line you mentioned a moment ago, but on offense too. I mean, they're making the plays that we had seen the Colonels make up to this point in the season. So they'll take over on the missed field goal, snapping the seven in a row by Wozniak, all inside 40 yards, running back. And Turner, who's had a career day, got to the 26-yard line. Let's talk a little bit on the pickup of three by Turner about him. Jaquerion Turner, they say just call him JT, three-star redshirt freshman out of South Garland High School in the Lone Star State. He drew interest from Texas Tech, offers from Missouri State and McNeese State. It is high school. Last two years, 3,394 yards, 43 touchdowns, 6A audible mention, all state. And boy, has he been all star today. Self went up to pass, and the ball came out of his hands. That ball slipped out of his hands, and it looked like it should be a fumble. Eastern Kentucky comes up with it if it stands. The ruling on the field Bossed. was a fumble by the quarterback, recovered by the defense, first down Eastern. Their third lost fumble of the day. That one just slipped out of the hands of Self and Jaden Bost out of Grayson, Georgia, with the fumble recovery. Bost, he was trying to fake Bost. He was trying to give him the pump so that Bost would peel off to the side, but the ball came out as soon as his hand went back. So. They'll take another look at this upstairs to make sure his arm wasn't coming forward, but I don't think there's any question that this will stay a fumble. I was waiting to see who had recovered the football. It may have been Hairston that fell on the football at the end. So Boss came after him, and then Hairston came up with a fumble recovery. But the pressure was the key. Here's Allen throwing a lollipop 
up for grabs. Dixon fighting the defender. It's picked off. Jim, that was just a obvious as Jeremiah Davis came up with it. Just a lollipop throw that would be easily intercepted. Dixon tried to play defender. And that's a head scratcher from the EKU side of things and a tremendous anticipation interception to turn it right back over. Allen that time felt pressure immediately. And as he has done this entire game, threw off his back foot, putting a lot of air under the football. And uh, that that's just easy pickings for the safety. He's playing center field. He's going to get the pick. And to add to that point, he was anticipating that pressure too. I think he was preparing to get hit and threw, as you call it, Greg, just a lollipop. I mean, that thing hung in the air, and you were just waiting to see. There were no maroon jerseys close. I may have been able to get under that one. I'm not sure, but I think I may have been able to. I mean, Dixon made a great effort to almost strip it away from Davis, who held on to it. Second interception of the game, and here's Turner. And they're just going to run clock now. So Eastern Kentucky will drop to 2-5 and five unless things change dramatically. The fifth win in a row will equal the longest streak of five in 2011. They had had four wins in a row coming in, and you questioned a bit the fact that three of them came against Division II teams. They've answered the bell today. And I want to get to what Colby Carthel told you about this game and the one before against an FCS opponent in a minute here, second and five. Underneath six minutes, up 24-6. Again, they run Turner. Turner's been the workhorse. They haven't used anybody else. It's been all Turner. What with their Texas Tech transfer, out with a wrist injury, daily on Ward. Josh McGowan injured the last five games. Madison Norris, the tackle. They're not eligible due to APR problems to even play if they had played spring football for a championship, Jim. So they turned this into a 10-game fall schedule. And I thought really good coaching and psychology by Colby Carthel. Oh, yeah, he told me that, the, that, and he emphasized it several times, that this was going to be the second best team they had played all season, second only to SMU. And, and that team is loaded this season. Here's Self on third down, handing off to Turner, who breaks tackles, still going 45 far sideline. Start up the bus to the airport. Davion Ross made the tackle. What a day for the former audible mention. All-Stater down at Texas, 21 more yards. He's had a heck of a day. Up to 186 yards. Meanwhile, the entire EKU team has rushed for 30. Carthel said they treated the Abilene Christian game that they won in overtime. This is what I was alluding right, to, yeah. Jim, to their Southland Conference Championship game. And right. then what they made this game, we'll tell you after this first down play. This clock goes down to 420. <laughs> and off coming left side, new running back, or is it still the same guy? Turner. Double check the number, it's Turner. He may go over 200 yards. He will with that run, a 200-yard rushing game. Nobody even near the area to get off the edge to make the tackle. Down to the 34-yard line. And, Greg, what Kobe Carthel told me was they're treating this game as a bowl game. They got a chance well, to charter a play. playoff game. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and they, they haven't had that experience. And I think it was a very smart move by Carthel to go, hey, you know what, this is uh, we're treating this like it, it, it's one and done. Well, you'll move on to the second round of the playoffs. Uh, <laughs> you know, in the mythical world here, here's Turner. He'll have ice on his body after this game. EKU plus one in turnover margin, but put a big asterisk on that. They're two of 16 on third right, down yeah, conversions. Yeah. Their quarterback has been sacked six times. The highest sack total that EKU has allowed since Marshall had six against EKU in 2018. They've had two punts blocked today, one return for a touchdown. EKU has thrown a stinker on the field, and you got to give SFA credit for making it happen. And you're plus in the turnover category. You got no points off turnovers, none. Yeah, I mean, your red zone has been 0 for 3 today on touchdowns. New running back for the first time, White, Corbin White, freshman from Texarkana, Texas. 200 
seven yards by Turner in his first start. White goes off, they're gonna bring Turner back on, third and seven now. Let's see if he gets the football and SFA just tries to make the first down, continue keeping the clock going. Well, Cubby Carthel won a national championship at Texas A&M Commerce in 2017 and this once proud playoff bound program looks like they're turning the corner back that way come 2021. One more yard to make it 208 yards on third down and seven. He got one, fourth and six. Let's see what Stephen F. Austin does here with two minutes to go. Elijah Taylor, the tackle. I, and I think it boils down Time some. Out. Eastern Kentucky, it's first the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. And I, what I was starting to say, Greg, is you can throw the numbers out there, uh, but I think I can boil this down to anybody who wants to know what happened and that is EKU, plain and simple, got their butt whooped up front. Yeah. I mean, both sides, both of, the sides of the ball. The offensive line could not give the quarterback time to throw. I'm not going to throw this all on Dakota Allen. He didn't have time to throw the football. He was scrambling for his life most of the afternoon. And then on the other side, the defensive line couldn't get pressure and get the, the tackle. We'd seen this defense make tackles in the backfield all season long, and we're getting better at it. And it was a huge step backwards today, maybe even two or three. You can use an excuse, and it is a legitimate excuse to an extent from the EKU side of things that, yes, you're not without your starting quarterback who was really humming, playing very well at a high level, and your top tackler in Matt Jackson and your most experienced defensive back in Comstock. But... It's a team game, and SFA has been the better team by far today. Here's Self to throw on fourth down. Real close to the first down, just shy of it, needed the 25, and they only got to 26. Nearly a late hit there by Sales, but they didn't throw the flag. Carey made the tackle. The SFA record for most rushing yards in a game by one player is Isaiah Stoker against Jacksonville State in 1999. Of course, Jack State used to play in the Southland Conference. Now in the OVC, he had 289 yards. Top tackler in the game, Caleb Lundy of EKU with 10, his second double-figure tackle game of the year. He had 11 against Troy, but the Stars today, Self, 12 of 18, managed the game well. Sands, four sacks and two fumbles lost, but Turner would be your player of the game on offense, and Osakage on the other side. Throw it to Dixon. Have you noticed also that Dixon has become such a good receiver and a big target, especially in the Troy game, that now UCA and now SFA have certainly shut him down today. Dixon not thrown too much. Three t catches, just five in the last two games. And McKinney and Dixon really had magic together, and there is just nothing like that now. Second and 10, minute 52. Allen coming near side and just sails it over the head of an open key on Dixon. And, and the, Greg, that's just an example of two guys that haven't run that in practice together enough to have that dependability on each other. The, 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 the communication, the rhythm. I, I said rhythm maybe 500 times today, but there's just no better way to describe it. When you practice every day with a guy, you get that rhythm and you know what's going to happen. Allen just doesn't have that with Dixon right now. 14 of 35 today, 40%. Back to pass on third and 10, and he throws it over the head of a leaping Wilcox for what would have been a first down with a minute 43 to go. I think you got one more play down, 18 with a 103 ticks left, and now some talking. Looks like Day Day Coleman said something. Let's see if he was caught or if After Hurdle play, said something. Unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, uh, defense zero. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense 77. Those fouls offset, they're first. Well, no. 77's offense, on offense, yeah. but it's been a long day for David C. Where it was on Jordan Johnson. So Jordan Johnson and Day Day Coleman saying something, and if they're both mouthing, Day Day's got more to say because his team's ahead 24 to six. All you got to do is turn around, point at the scoreboard. I mean, if, if you're Coleman, 
Why why even even be in that type of area? You just turn around, point at the scoreboard, and get on the plane. 208 yards by Turner, the 17th 200-yard rushing game in SFA history. And the first since 2015. Fourth and 10 for Allen. Flag down, two of them holding. Allen pushed out of bounds. Game over. Unless, and you got to think this is a hold. Last time they had a 200-yard rusher was Lauren Easley against Sam Houston State. Minute 36 Holy in the game. Offense, number 66. A penalty is declined. First down, Stephen F. Austin. So the favorite victory formation will probably be employed here. Take the knee and pack your bags, get on the flight, and head home with your fifth win in a row if you're the Lumberjacks. How fun is that flight going to be? Can you imagine them on that plane? Come on. Come on. That was the referee, by the way, who had not turned off I think he was flight. agreeing with me. My whistle. <laughs> Minute 36 to go here. Crowd emptying at Roy Kidd Stadium. They will take the knee. Self walks up and takes the right knee to the turf. Impressive performance by Colby Carthels. Lumberjacks. They'll work their way to five and three. EKU, EKU will drop to two and five. Consider the team that had a lead with 21 seconds to go against Troy and suffered a tough loss versus this one today. No comparison. And again, the line play, good defensive line play by, U by SFA. Not much protection by the EKU offensive line. The quarterback, 14 of 36, picked twice. You know, you come in with McKinney in his career, McKinney or in this season, McKinney was hitting on 64% of his passes. 40 seconds to go before this one becomes final. We hope you enjoyed it here. EKU goes to Conway, Arkansas against Central Arkansas next Saturday. Pittsburgh State, their last Division II team, at home in Nacogdoches next week for the Lumberjacks. Walt Wells will go to midfield to meet Kobe Carthel, and officially this one will be over in 10 seconds. For analyst Jim Tyree and field reporter Wes Chandler, I'm Greg Stottlemyre from here in Richmond. With the Golden Crowd final score is Stephen F. Austin 24, Eastern Kentucky 6. This Colonel football from Learfield IMG College. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.